Hello and welcome to consultetraining.com. Dot 2 Basics MIDI Control. Today we will be running through the process of setting up a MIDI device, mapping it using Bohm MIDI Pro, and then putting it into Dot 2. The hardware we're using is a Korg Nano Control 2. Our output hardware, featured in Video 2, will be DMX King EDMX 1 Pro. The software we're using, Dot 2 on PC 1.2.2. Dot 2 3D 1.2.2 and Bohm MIDI Translator Pro. So the first thing we have to do is we need to set up the MIDI routing. Most devices, such as the Nano Control 2, will send out things called control changes or CCs, which aren't accepted by MA. So the software we're using, Bohm's MIDI Translator Pro, essentially translates that. But the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our MIDI mapping. So we go to MIDI, MIDI Router. We select our device, which is the Nano Control 2, and we make a physical connection to our virtual output. It may prompt you with a little pop-up that says this connection is not open yet, so the input may not be open or the output may be open. Click yes on both of those to accept them. Now we can start our MIDI mapping. So we're going to check what we get and to check to see what we're getting from the device we click on caption MIDI and then if we press a button on the device we're going to see that it comes up as a note on on channel 1, note 64, 48, 32 and so on. We're focusing on the faders for now so we're going to move up one of the faders, the 8th fader and we can see that that comes up on channel 1 and CC7. So we need to set our input to a control change we need to set the CC to 7. We need to set the value to a variable of OO. And then for the outgoing, we need to set it to a MIDI message, a note on. We're going to set it to channel 0. And we're going to set it to note 0. Then for the velocity, we're going to set it to OO. We're also going to click on swallow MIDI message which is here, and this means that when we're routing information, we're not passing the CCs through to dot two. And the reason we do this is when we come to it, we're not gonna get all the bunch of garbage and the MA that we don't really need. We're also gonna name our translator. We're gonna call it exact one, just for tracking. And then we're gonna repeat the process and we're gonna create another one following the same procedure. We're calling it exact two. We're making it a control change. We're capturing the MIDI. And then on this one, we can see that it's now control change 6. So we set our CC to 6. We set our value to the variable, this time PP. And then for the outgoing, we go to a MIDI message. We go note 2 or note 1. And our velocity is also PP. And as we did with the first one, we're going to swallow the message. That completes the basic setup for mapping in uh, BOMES. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move into MA and we're going to show you what we've done and how it correlates. So with the BOMES software still running in the background, we've now opened our dot two version and we're going to run through what we've got currently. I've programmed in two very simple cue stacks. We've got pars just in white, and then we've got 101s, and we've also got two colors for those. To get MIDI control of those, we need to go into Tools, MIDI Configuration, and we need to set our MIDI in to Bohm MIDI Translator. On some devices, such as Windows 10 computers or Windows 7 computers, this may come up as BMT-T1, or Bohm MIDI Translator 1. The reason we're setting this to Bohm's rather than our physical device that we can see here is that Bohm's is doing the CC translation that we set up before. Once we've done that, we can go into MIDI Monitor and we can see that there's a bunch of the control change messages that we were talking about before. However, if I pull up one of my faders that we've mapped, we can see instead of seeing the CCs, 
we can see it firing on channel 1, note 0, and the pitch is just the velocity. So now we've got the information in, we can go into Setup, Remote Inputs, and we make sure that we've got MIDI turned on, and then we can set things. So we can see for note 0, we want it to be an executor, we want it to be page 1, and we want the function to be fader. For note 1, we want executor, page 1, executor 2, and then fader. Now we can try our faders. As we can see, this is fader 1, and this is fader 2. So now we've got faders working, let's work on buttons. We can attack this in two different ways. We can either press the button and go into mini monitor and find out where the button is and we can see that the button we're flashing is note 39 and it's on channel 1. What we can also do is we can go into setup, remote inputs, and when we press the button we can see that we're receiving MIDI here, and we can just scroll down until we get a little green light. Here we see it is 39, and we can just enter the data here. So we can click Executor, we can make it Page 1, Executor 1, and we'll make this because it's the top button, button number 1. We can then repeat the process with the second button, and we do our scroll again, and we find that it's 55. So we set this to 1, and we set this to button 2. Now we've got our fader control. We can advance to our cues with button 1, and if we bring it back to 0, we can also flash it. So if we brought it up for, let's say, 25% on the fader, we can still flash it by pressing the button and advance it. It's Exactly the same for fader 2, but let's repeat the process. So for fader 2, we're going to rapidly press the button, and we're going to scroll down, and we're going to see that it's 38. We're going to set it to executor, we're going to set it to page 1, this time it's executor 2, we can leave it as button 1, and we'll do our lower button now, we'll scroll down, and it should be right next to our other one as the notes go in a line. So if I was to go back one fader, that would be the previous number, and we'd work back. So that's why the numbers seem a bit weird, because rather than going as per fader, they go from left to right. So we'll press our button again, click Executor, Page 1, and set it to Button 2. And then once again, we'll test it. We'll bring up our second one. We'll push our button and we'll realize that I've mapped it to Executor 1. It should be Executor 2. And now we've got a flash button for Executor 2, and our first button, if we had cues, would go through our cues. This concludes Episode 1 of our two-part series on Dot 2 Basics. In our next video, we're going to cover getting output via an ACN box. Stay tuned after this little video for a very short advertisement on how you can get your hands on an EDMX1 Pro yourself. Thanks for watching.